Well, hello everyone and welcome to the fourth All-Star Artist Jam here at Lightbox Weekend. Uh, my name is Adam Hartel. I'm going to be your host today and we've got a great time in store for us. Um, I'd like to say thank you to our uh, sponsors, uh, Nomen, for uh, allowing us to use the, uh, their Twitch channel and their stream to, uh, to bring all these artists together for everyone coming over from Lightbox. Um, those of you who are joining us from outside Lightbox, perhaps, maybe you're just wandering around the internet and found this, uh, this is a part of Lightbox Expo. Uh, this is a, an amazing conference for artists that was debuted last year in Pasadena, California. And uh, this year, because of social distancing, they've really innovated uh, the way that they've taken this online. Um, and as you can see, uh, we have artists right now that are drawing on a cloud-based uh, drawing application, very similar to Photoshop, called Magma Studio. Um, so we've got some fantastic artists that are going to be just hanging out, uh, having a bit of an art jam. Uh, we're going to be talking. It's going to be conversational, really chill. You can ask questions in the chat. Um, for anybody who's not familiar with Nomen, I just wanted to mention that uh, Nomen is, in fact, a 3D art school. Uh, we're located in Hollywood, and uh, we specialize in training artists for careers in visual effects, animation, and in games. Um, so if that, or those are disciplines that are of interest to you, you can definitely check out our website just at nomen.com, G-N-O-M-O-N. And uh, I'll share a little bit later in the chat, guys, that if you see something you like that you want to take. We're actually offering a 20% discount for Lightbox um, this year. Uh, so if you want to take an individual class, you can just put Lightbox in the registration like discount code and you get 20% off an individual class at our school. So with that, guys, um, I just want to say welcome. And I definitely want to say welcome to all of our artists who are here with us right now. Um, they've already gotten, they're jumping in, they're starting to draw and sketch, warm up and whatnot. Um, but guys, would you mind, um, in no particular order, uh, just uh, kind of chime in and introduce yourselves and just share share a couple things about what you do. You this, go on first. <laughs> this is the fun no, part because this is the part where everybody's so polite. No, you go. No, you go. Cassie, you go first because you, you talk first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so I'm a visual development artist. I work at Netflix Animation currently on an unannounced show. Um, yeah, what else do I think? <laughs> uh, I used to work on Scoob at, um, Real Effects. Cool. Who's next? Cool. I'm calling next. Aki Ball. I'll be next. I'm Renee DeTerry and I work at Adobe. I am the marketing manager for drawing and painting. Um, but I don't know how I got stuck in the corporate world because I'm an artist too. I love to draw and paint and I actually went to school for it, um, just like most of you did. And I accidentally became friends with Bobby because of Sketchbook Pro, which was a job I used to work. I used to be their community manager. So um, sadly, Sketchbook Pro has kind of gotten a little bit shelved at Autodesk, but Adobe snapped me up and now I'm helping them develop Adobe Fresco, which is their app for the iPad. It's totally free. Please go try it. Just try it. It's free. <laughs> cool. Thanks Welcome. for having me. Yeah, definitely. I'll go next. Okay. Uh, hi, my name is Xu Chen. I, I used to work in mobile games, but uh, two weeks ago, I switched jobs. <laughs> I'm currently working in Unity doing some uh, concept art and illustrations for project proposals. Awesome. Welcome. Yeah. Short intro. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I'll go. Uh, I'm Alex Konstad. I'm an art director at Netflix Animation. I'm uh, working on an unannounced project. Um, and I do a lot of personal projects. I've got a book called Obliskira on um, Kickstarter right now. But uh, yeah, glad to be here. Cool. Welcome, Alex. And for our viewers, uh, just to let you know, I and bringing in the the video windows now for, for our artists uh, from our Zoom call so you can see who's talking when they're talking. Uh, but I think people mostly want to pay attention to the canvas anyway, so that's fine. <laughs> yeah, so our next artist, please. I can go. Uh, I'll go um, next. Oh, okay. sorry. Go ahead, Vicky. Okay. okay. Um, hi, I'm Victoria Ying. I am a visual development artist and comics artist. Um, I used to work at Disney Feature Animation, where I was visual development for eight years. Uh, and since then, I've uh, become a author-illustrator, and my debut graphic novel, City of Secrets, is currently in stores now. 
Uh, and I'm working on the sequel. Awesome. And by the way, I took your VizDev course on schoolism. And uh, oh, cool. it was really good. If anybody is interested, especially for someone like me, if you're doing a concept art, and you're kind of wondering, like, what is the difference between concept design and visual development? Uh, it's a great, great course to take. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, hi, I'm Linda. I'm a VizDev artist, and currently I'm uh, art directing Troll Hunters Rise of the Titans for Netflix. And um, it's the uh, fourth in the Guillermo del Toro trilogy. Awesome. On Netflix. <laughs> Very cool. Welcome. <laughs> I'm Mel, uh, Mel Anil Kuna. I work as a character designer on TV and media. Uh, currently working for Papi Files, and yeah, I'm Latina. I came from Venezuela, so it's been nice to be drawn here with you guys. Awesome, welcome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll go next. Hi, hi everybody. I'm Sunmin. Uh, I am a visitor artist as well in feature mainly, and currently I'm or directing on a feature film over at Netflix that's unannounced. Um, nice to meet you guys. <laughs> yeah, welcome. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much. Is that everybody? Uh, I think so. Uh, I wait, um, I'll, I'll, oh, I guess. Oh. I don't want to cut anyone off. Everybody's being so, so polite. I love it. Um, <laughs> hey, uh, my name's Jared Moran. So I've been a concept artist for uh, about 20 years. I do a lot of uh, Marvel and DC movies. I uh, work a lot with uh, Marvel visual development, and I, I bounce around a lot. <laughs> cool. Welcome, Jared. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Uh, I guess I can go. Um, my name is Dominic Ramsey. I am an illustrator and character designer. Um, I do mostly freelance. Yeah, I do mostly freelance. <laughs> yeah, I'm right there with you. <laughs> and and it's fun. I like doing freelance. Um, welcome, Dominique. Thank you. And then have we, is that everybody now? I, I don't want to be the guy that uh, forgot somebody. I didn't go. Uh, okay. I'm kind of nervous. Uh, my name's Elaine, and I'm kind of like fresh to the industry. Uh, I'm I'm currently doing background paint, uh, painting uh, for solar opposites, and like maybe someday I want to move on to visit them. Awesome! Thank you for being here, Elaine. <laughs> okay. Um, hi, I'm Sophie. I. Um, I work at Google on the Google Doodles team doing illustrations and animations um, and a bit of art direction. And I have an animation background, so I'll occasionally do some background, background paint and design for TV animation. And I'm also a kids book illustrator on the side. Nice to meet everybody. Cool. Welcome, Sophie. It sounds like you might be having some audio issues, and that could just be uh, internet speed related. It doesn't sound like your hardware is glitching. Um, we could still understand you, but um, I'll let you know if, if anything happens along the way. Um, cool. Is that everybody? I'll take that as a yes. Or what? Okay. I'll yeah, I was just going to agree. <laughs> All right, cool. I'll take that as a yes, guys. Um, well, this is, this is super cool, and it's fun. By the time we usually get through introductions on these streams, everybody's already really moving along um, in their sketches. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to let everybody, you know, just go a little bit more with the muse that they found. Um, but as the canvas starts to fill up, I will um, do a refresh and uh, we'll start interacting with a prompt, um, which which is always fun. But just while everybody's working here and, and uh, artists, please feel free to interact with each other. If you have questions for each other, or you just want to chat and talk. This is more of just a informal hangout than it is a demo or a lesson of some sort. Um, and for everybody in the chat, feel free to type some questions in the chat. I'll do my best uh, to get to some of them as, as they come up. 
Um, but really, this is just a time to actually do something that you normally wouldn't be able to do. Um, and I think uh, an innovative thing like Magma Studio is really cool because we all get a front row seat. In fact, we, we get to be on the platform with the artist looking over their shoulder on their Cintiq as they're drawing. Um, and that's something that is just not possible like that at a live event. So I think that's a great example of how um, the limitations of social distancing have brought on some amazing um, innovations uh, that I think we're all benefiting from. And I don't want any of those innovations to go away when we're through this pandemic, because I think it's just going to enrich our lives as artists that much more um, when we come through this. So yeah, keep, keep drawing everybody. I'll keep my eye on the chat. And uh, yeah, let's just enjoy our time. Is you guys scream lagging a little bit? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right? So you guys are experiencing some lag? No, uh, mine's pretty good. Uh, okay. Yeah, mine's slow. Mine, mine is slow. I'm thinking about getting out and coming back in through uh, Google Chrome. Okay. Oh, we yeah. should do that? That has helped uh, in some cases. So if you have Chrome, try leaving, coming back into the same link that I shared uh, in Google okay. Chrome. And then let us know if that works better. I'm going to give that a shot. OK, Jared. <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, let's see. Somebody in the chat just said the monster in the car. That is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Went straight to my comfort zone. <laughs> oh, yeah. And that's the other th the thing that's really cool. You know, you get artists just sketching and drawing, um, and it's not strictly for educational purposes or for demonstrative purposes. Uh, you get to see what artists like to do when they're just chilling, you know, and kind of the comfort drawings, as it were. Yeah, that didn't help much. It's so dumb. <laughs> um, it did, you said it didn't help that much coming yeah. back in from? I'm sorry to hear that. Um, it may improve. <laughs> that it, it, sometimes I know that these things just have to kind of settle in as your system optimizes around it. But um, let us know if you... If, if the if it just keeps chugging along and if the problem persists okay it's fine i'll just manage. are you working in in windows or on mac i'm on mac with chrome okay um you might want to for anybody who hasn't already you might want to take a look at the little hamburger menu up in the upper left hand corner uh just next to file you drop that down and there's a help file that you can click on um you scroll to the bottom of the help file and it has all the keyboard shortcuts which are going to be very similar to photoshop um, but the help file also has, uh, you know, notes for people on a Mac, notes for people on a PC, um, depending, you know, there's even notes for iOS. Uh, so if you're experiencing any challenges, you might want to take a look there. And it looks like, I think, does everybody have uh, pressure sensitivity as well? Is anybody not getting that? It looks, like, looks like everybody is, is getting along pretty well. But yeah, if anybody experiences a problem with that, there's, there's a few fixes that have come up for that along the way. All right, cool. Okay, so there's a general question that's come up um, that I'm sure a lot of you have been asked already. Um, and that is, you know, the difference between working remotely in your job and working um, in studio. And I think a lot of, for a lot of us that freelance, a lot of times it's just always remote, but which, which do you like better? And what has it been like adjusting to that? If anybody wants to take a stab at that question. Uh, well, I like, I've been remote for what, four years now, three years. Um, and it was a big adjustment for me, um, just going from a studio environment where, you know, there was so much structure and then kind of being in charge of your own schedule. Um, you know, I remember that took me like six months to adjust. So, you know, seeing everyone else kind of go through that all at the same time with the pandemic, oh, yeah. it was really like, oh my gosh, like the pressure you guys must've been under to like make that adjustment. Um, you know, I think that like, it depends on the person. Like I have now discovered that I can work pretty well remotely, but it took me a long time to, to feel comfortable doing that. Um, but yeah. And I think you're, you're like in the, with the San Gabriel Valley, right? Like in the Pasadena area? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, Pasadena. I, I found that that's a, just a great location to be in too. Um, if you need oh, yeah. to get to different studios and locations. Oh, Jared's waiting in the waiting room. Hang on, let me admit him. Make sure he gets in. Thanks just to like talk about uh, the recent change as an introvert. I know that it's a complete disaster outside, but personally I find it a lot more relaxing <laughs> to, to just kind of like sit in my chair and not have to socialize. Totally. 
you know, it's funny because I'm extroverted, but I feel the same way. Oh, really? <laughs> I, I, I'm extroverted. Like, I don't mind talking to people. Like, uh -huh. I have no fear of it. But I am very antisocial at the same time, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is super weird. I know, but it's true. I um, think it's also that, um, you, uh, like, in the morning when you go to work, there's, like, almost, like, an hour and a half that you spend just getting to work, you know? Yes. Like, you, you, you wake and up. Coffee. Yeah, coffee. You, you like in my case, I put on makeup. I have to dress. Oh, man, I gotta wear something that's not from yesterday. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, it's just so much thinking and um, energy involved in going to work. But then now you just kind of wake up, and <laughs> just sit at your desk. It's just kind of nice, you know. Yep, yeah. and you know, I definitely feel that was a huge, because I was commuting to Sony from Pasadena, which is an hour and a half each way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Down to yeah. Santa Monica or Culver City? <laughs> Culver City, yeah. Yeah. So like that was my last job before I like started working from home exclusively. And so just saving that three hours every day was just, yeah. it saves you so much mental anguish. Because like, you really can't do anything when you drive either. Like you're just driving. Oh, that's right. why I hate your driving. Day wasted. Yeah, I take the bus when I go to Adobe in San Francisco. Oh, and nice. at least you can do something else. Like I can draw on my iPad or I can like read the news or whatever. But no, when you're forced to drive, oh. Crap. Yeah, I personally have always liked remote because I started out freelancing. Uh -huh. So when COVID hit, I was just like, cool, I could do this every day. <laughs> <laughs> every day. And then you can't even really go out in public. So I'm like, all right. <laughs> it's definitely a time to get in touch with your inner introvert. Um, mm -hmm. And I agree. I love all the time gained when you don't have to commute two times a day. Mm -hmm. What about for those of you, I think uh, at least a couple of you have gone from working in-house to working freelance. What was that transition like? Shock. Uh Someone else can go. Okay, I'll go. Um, yeah, so like I was, I was working in house for a long time, and then switching to freelance. And you know, my books that I work on, they take years. You know, the I signed the deal for the, my book that just came out in um, 2016. So you know, well, maybe it's 2017. So it was three years before you know the book came out, and all that time to like schedule like the writing and the drawing of it that's all like stuff you have to do no one else is going to be on you about it they're like okay deliver us a book in a year <laughs> and you just kind of have to be like okay and i think that like switching from freelance or from studio to freelance getting that kind of discipline to like make sure that you are your own producer that is a huge transition that's difficult for a lot of people and it was for me too um, so like, that was something that I definitely missed. Like I missed not having to do my own administration work. And like, if I have tech support issues, I have to deal with that. Like, I don't, I can't just be like, I don't have to work now. You fix it, tech guy. <laughs> so, you know, I think that there's definitely an adjustment to be had there. Um, but yeah, I guess it depends on the work that you want to do. Like I miss, you know, going in, like, I'm an extrovert too. So I miss like, you know, standing around the water cooler and talking about Game of Thrones or whatever, you know, <laughs> that's when I left work, basically. Um, so yeah, like, I, I definitely that that interaction was something that I was always kind of craving. Um, but it's nice that like, now that everyone's doing this, that they've all kind of learned how to adapt. And like, we have zoom sessions and stuff now. Yeah. So I almost feel like everyone else like met me <laughs> at my level, you know, yeah, I've been setting up virtual coffee chats with my team. Mm -hmm. Like, let's just have 15 minutes to literally bullshit, <laughs> like do nothing. Mm -hmm. And that's really been helpful. Yeah, I think for me, I definitely want to transition one day to full-time freelance and I could definitely see myself working at home forever. But the main thing is just because of COVID, like not being able to go and like hang out at a coffee shop or go to bars with people and meet up after work and cut that kind of stuff. But it's really nice to be at home and be able to like do stuff during the day. Like I can take a break and hang out with my cats or water my garden, things like that. Yeah. I yeah. I totally agree, Kathleen. Like 
I feel like this type of work from home is kind of different than what it would actually be without the pandemic because mm -hmm. you kind of have to fully jump into like well I'm working from home now and that's all I do versus I guess if you were freelancing in a different more normal time you could go to you could even rent like a co-working space you could have opportunities to meet people still and now it's more just like you have to make your own opportunities Hey, Jared, did you make it in okay? Yeah, yeah, okay, I'm good. good. good I'm good. good now. It seems to be it seems to be running much better. Oh, good. And you're, you're doing that in Chrome now? Yeah, yeah, okay, that, was a big, that was a big help. Good to hear. Uh, Jared, we were talking uh, just before we went live with the stream. Um, you actually uh, taught at Nomen for a while, right? Yeah, I think it was close to uh, eight years, maybe? Mm-hmm. I was over there. Um, it's a very good experience. Met a lot of uh, students. Quite quite a few. I was actually able to bring on to projects and um, became future coworkers. So very very proud of uh, at the very least that you know being able to share what I do and and get people interested enough um, to uh, try to make a living doing it. Uh, so it's. Yeah, that was that, that was very rewarding. Eventually, I got so busy I couldn't do it anymore. So now I'll only do like um, workshops and and lectures or just release online content, which I'm a little behind on. Uh, but but I, I I love teaching. Well, I know at least a couple of our instructors there who I've had the pleasure of learning from were were taught by you. Um, mm -hmm. They came up through the school um, with you as an instructor. Yeah, and it, it wasn't that long ago, and so many of them are just so damn good and uh, are now incredible teachers. So it was it was bizarre to see such a quick uh, turnaround from student working professional, and then you know right back at Nomen, um, you know where I met them teaching. Uh, it's very bizarre, but uh, but it was it was you know just very rewarding to teach. Really it's, it. it is a very small world too. Um, yeah, it's it's amazing how small it is. Um, yeah, no, and, and uh, I was talking with with Kyle Brown about this, who learned from you, and we were remarking, you know, how you know a lot of times people might look over at you know artists working in entertainment, working as digital artists, and how that's so different from fine art, and it can be, um, although you know you definitely bring a lot of those skill sets in, but um, because digital art is still relatively young as a medium. Um, we're really starting to now see this idea of like, just like what happened in the Renaissance and early art history, like you have artists such as yourself who, who kind of did a lot of pioneering and, and developed some methodologies and things like that, and then pass that on to their artists. And then those artists are passing the same methodologies on, adding some of their own stuff. Um, and you could really look, you know, down the lineage as it were and see the development of the craft. Yeah. Um... I guess. I mean, that, that statement makes me feel very old. Oh, uh, no, I don't mean it like that. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, a, lot, a lot of those guys are, are, are actually around my same age. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I don't think, if I were to be honest, uh, let's see, I started, I started working in uh, 2005. So I don't know if I've come up with any truly original um you know techniques uh, aside from from how i taught um i don't know i, I wouldn't i wouldn't necessarily refer to my i i i, I wouldn't imagine that I, I pioneered much if 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 anything just because this you know the history of concept art is is, is so established like you look at i think pioneers i think of like you know um uh, Craig Mullins or Justin Sweet in terms of, you know, what we consider uh, modern digital art. Um, but uh, it's funny because we just had Craig on a couple of streams yesterday and, awesome. you know, he, he even shies away from that a little bit, too. He's like, well, I don't know, you know. Um, so it's it's funny. <laughs> I think everybody makes their mark, um, but by nature uh, tend to be tend to be fairly humble. But um no, I, it, you can definitely see that. And nothing's like 100% original, right? Like we all we all borrow from something and then work with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then yeah. you've been doing a lot of work in 3D now, right? 
Almost entirely now. Um, I, I think I, I mentioned earlier that uh, clients, especially with film, because I'll, I'll do a lot of video games and there's still uh, an appreciation for drawing and drawing and painting is the most effective way to design. And so oftentimes when I come across people who are interested in doing what I do, I steer them away from uh, 3D modeling and Photoshop and I try to get them to draw for as, as much as possible because it's just such a more efficient way to mm -hmm. um, to work. But yeah, in film, every option now that I, I produce is in 3D, especially if I'm doing a, um, a creature design because it's such an, a, a bizarre new thing that, um, you know, a client hasn't, can't really wrap their head around. Like even with some you know, amazing costumes or armor designs. You can show one angle and people kind of get it. Uh, definitely enough for like a yay or nay as to whether or not they're going to, you know, continue down that path for the design. But when it comes to a, a creature design, I've had to turn in full turntables uh, over and over again for every every option. So I, um, I don't get to draw as much. Oftentimes I'll actually juggle multiple projects just so I get the opportunity to draw regularly. So I might do a video game on the side. And for video games, I'll be cranking out options in Photoshop and then refining in 3D instead of film being the entire thing done in, in ZBrush. So it's it's changed a bit. The, the one constant in, in concept art is they want typically more detail, um, in a shorter amount of time and 3D really, uh, really gets you there. So it's, it's hard, it's hard to keep up on drawing. Well, and you, but playing. you brought up a really super important point about what you encouraging artists to spend time drawing and to develop their, their abilities there. Um, and, and, you know, as you know, we do the same thing at Noman just because we're 3D mm -hmm. art school, we are teaching traditional sculpture. We're teaching figure drawing and how to draw in 3D in two dimensions. Um, yeah. because yeah, when I was there, I only taught the 2D class. Yeah, and there's no, I mean, and I think that 3D can seem like a shortcut through some things, mm -hmm. but, you know, without the mileage in the foundational things, I, you know, art directors can tell. Um, oh, yeah. If you don't know that, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, it really, I mean, you know, it, 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 it depends. I would say, again, in, in video games, it's a bit more organized. In film, every production that starts up is is brand new it's a revolving door of, of producers and talent and so you know they might not know they might see you know a bad model and and love it and then you mm. know that that sets the the pace but not not usually on on bigger projects but it, it has been known to happen yeah no and i'll use that as a segue to mention guys that i did drop in the chat um and um, this is just a shameless plug uh, because uh, Noman so graciously sponsored. Uh, we are offering individual classes at a 20% discount if you use the code Lightbox. Um, so if anybody out there is already in a 3D workflow and is interested in learning from uh, industry professionals, um, or if you're entirely new to 3D, um, or if you want to even take some of the design classes that we offer in Noman, we've got some fantastic 2D design classes. Uh, feel free to head over to uh, noman.edu and browse those courses. Um, but I'll, I'll drop that information in the chat uh, one more time. Um, and then after that, I'd like to take a quick tour of the canvas and just kind of talk to talk to each of you guys and kind of see see what you're doing. I just found the new layer button. I'm really proud of you. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You could do new layer. Um, you can even do uh, clipping masks. Um, you can even share can a layer with this? somebody. Yeah with somebody else if you want. It's a similar symbol to what you'll see in Photoshop for, for clipping masks um, right up there in the in the menu above the Damn. layers. Well, good to know. <laughs> it's I know it's it's amazing how robust uh, magma is for being cloud based like this. Are there other brushes other than the standard one? Or well, yeah. I think right now, um, if I recall from what, what Bobby was saying when he started giving us the orientation, there's not a whole lot of different type of brush shapes, but each of those parking places just under the color wheel, uh, whatever adjustments you make to the brush you're using, oh, it will okay. stay there. So you can hop between cool. different types of brushes. Um, density is going to be more like flow, I think, in Photoshop. Um, opacity and hardness are going to be the same thing. Um, but cool. you know, the feel is a little bit different. You got to kind of play around with it a little bit. All right, let's see. 
I'm going to go in and let's see. I'm just going to share some chat really quick. Um, you guys are getting a lot of love for, for what you're making here in the chat. Where do you see the chat? Is that in Zoom? Um, no, it's going to be on the uh, Nomen Twitch channel. So if you go oh, to gotcha. Twitch TV slash uh, Nomen underscore school, um, you can watch the live feed while we're doing this. Uh, just ask that you mute the audio in Twitch so we don't get like a um, a God Ray sort of echo chamber happening. Um, <laughs> unless you like that sort of effect. I don't know. Um, all right. So I'm going to actually zoom in on, on the canvas here and just kind of take a quick little tour. Um, if you don't mind, I think I'll start with you, Renee. Oh, sure. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and again, this no pressure. This isn't this is not about having to be a demo or anything like that. But this is sort of like we're hanging out. Um, you're you're making something really cool. Um, you want to share with us just a little bit about either what you're doing right here or just your process in general. Yeah. Um, so I'm just totally comfort drawing, right? Like whenever I don't know what to draw, I just draw like a girl's face. Of mm -hmm. course, that's a total comfort, comfort drawing. And I love double girl. So I kind of give her these horns, but then I've not really paid a lot of attention to them. Um, I don't know. On the tip side, the only thing I can say is I pretty much blend by using the opacity trick. So I'll just talk about it real quick. Make sure that whatever brush you're using has opacity. Like you see, I'm laying down a bunch of strokes right there and they're kind of like overlapping and you see as they overlap the color changes because they're overlapping each color right so if i got like a red color in there i could overlap but those two those are two new shades right there so what i'll do is i'll color pick that color and then sort of it's my fake way of blending when there's no smudge tool like i have no problem blending without a smudge tool because you just color pick and you make sure your opacity is low and you can see i'm kind of like blending up there now it's going to be chunky and not like beautiful but that's okay this is just for funsies Absolutely. Well, and, and a lot of times you get a little bit more of a painterly aesthetic yeah. that way too. Uh, I remember when I first started digitally painting, I was using like soft brushes a lot, mm -hmm. try, you know, and it, you know, everything just starts getting a little washed out. Mushy. Yeah. So no, I, that, that blending method is great for edge control. Cool. Um, yeah. Thanks for sharing with us. I'm going to keep, yeah. uh, keep going, uh, making a bit of a carousel around the canvas here. Is this also yours right below yours? Here? Oh no, no that's oh, Su Chen. This is mine. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see your cursor there for a second. Oh, oh, yeah, I was just listening to Renee talking. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, hi. Um, yeah, you wanted to just tell us a little bit about how you how you approach uh, your art. Oh, uh, oh man! Like in the beginning, I didn't have anything in mind. I thought we were just warming up, so I drew like a, a random girl, <laughs> a random face. Yeah, I'm sorry, I tricked, <laughs> and then I I tricked you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I just I was like, yeah, no pressure, just warm up. But um, I know how it goes. You start making a mark, and then you get inspired, and you have to keep building on it. So, yeah, that, yeah. that's on me. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, no worries. And like I was, I, I was um, I just remembered a conversation I had with someone else like today morning about how I got my first job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like I was saying, I posted a lot of like, anime girls wearing kimono on um, deviant art. So this um, car came, um, company like contacted me and asked me to draw them like Japanese, like personified Japanese specialties. Oh, cool. So yeah, I think this image kind of came from that conversation. I was thinking about like what I used to draw <laughs> when totally. I was younger. Yeah. Yeah, and it's lovely. I love it. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. All right, I'm going to move over to the left here and the cursor's moving. So uh, I think that's, is that Melanie? Yeah. Okay, there we go. I have to like, I'm, I'm like following the cursor, trying to read it. And Sorry. No, 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 it's not your fault. Um, hopefully it's entertaining for our viewers. <laughs> yeah, how's it going? It's good. Again, I was just thinking that it was just a warm up, so I just started drawing a couple hugging because I miss hugs. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't know. I just go on like um, Pinterest and find like a moment that I like. Mm -hmm. And then I just try to get that moment and draw it. And usually, like, lately has been a lot of like between like interactions between two characters, like hugging or like in a party or doing stuff that we don't get to do now. <laughs> Nowadays, yeah. things that I miss. That's some of my favorite kind of character design. And I know that you always have to, you know, provide orthographics and turnarounds and that kind of stuff. But I love it yeah. when you get a design that's just so contextual. Yeah. 
Like a lot of my job is just drawing dogs and turning them around and putting like dresses like and bow ties on dogs. <laughs> so I, in my free time, I just draw like a lot of human interactions with like stuff that is not PG necessarily. <laughs> You're sort of like anything but dogs, no dogs. Yeah, me. yeah. yeah I don't want to draw more animals but in my free time. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so this is just a random sketch of like a couple of mm -hmm. Yeah, this is cool. Nothing All right. Me. And we're gonna I'm gonna kinda come into the middle area here. I don't see a cursor. And these oh. these could be a few different people, I don't know. Let's see. Oh, this is me. Oh hi, hi. Kathleen. Yeah, hi. Yeah, I also thought this was a warm up, so I was Well and like... it and it is. It's <laughs> and, and I'm not asking you to like debut the artwork that you're doing right now. It's just more just kind of go around and chat. So you could talk about what you're doing here or you can just talk yeah. about what you drew... love about what you do. Oh yeah. Um I drew my cat. He's amazing. I just adopted him during quarantine. Oh wow! Um, oh, nice. And then yeah, I just I was drawing random stuff like whatever comes to my head. Usually that's food, but I was just thinking of raccoons. So I drew a raccoon in a trash can, um, and then the little top left creature. I have a, a project called the Botanical Academy, and I'm working yeah. on like lots of plants and animals and gardens. It's all basically like a garden witch uh school so it's kind of that witch boarding house vibes yeah um yeah that's what i do a lot in my free time and then at work i'm uh working on an animated feature so drawing a lot of cute animals and yeah but then i do go home and i draw more cute animals <laughs> i was checking out the botanical garden last night online it's really cool oh thank you so yeah, much really and a really neat aesthetic too thanks yeah definitely all right, let's see. I'm going to come over to, I think it's Elaine. Oh, hi. Hi. And is this is this a, a, kind of a fairy-like creature that you're working on here? <laughs> she's from Ride the Guardians. They have like an SLC yes. obsession with her. Well, she's one of the cooler characters. I, I, I really liked her. Um, a lot of pathos. Yeah, so um, Elaine, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, kind of, Either you can talk to us about what you love about what you're doing presently um, or share some things about how you, you know, approach uh, building out a piece or something like that. Jeez. Oh, oh. Or, you know what, I and mean, this isn't about putting anybody on the spot either. If you're just sort of like, no, I'm just chilling, like it's all good, you can do that too. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't usually um, uh, talk about my process, I just just draw mm -hmm. and like really have it. but I, I i'm not gonna say really well and she's really cool and that's actually i was wondering if that was the character you were doing when it came over but you know i didn't want to presume it's super cool i think i actually follow you on twitter right because you do a lot of fan art of them i just want to say it's really cool tools? maybe it's a you you draw beautifully and it's really cute thank you <laughs> yeah fan, fan art is also a comfort thing for me as well i and and it, it it becomes a little too obvious if you go to my instagram but i have a particular type of fan art that i like to draw and that's just always home based for me um because it takes me back to when i was just a kid and uh just drew a lot of star wars because i wanted more star wars and uh had a lot of fun doing that so when i want to blow off some steam that's what i do all right let's see here and then who so we've got i want to make sure i'm not mashing two different people's art together we've got this giant cat and then we've got some other sketches kind of around the perimeter of the cat are those two different people yes i think so i, I oh, think yeah. i'll erase my tail so that you know, <laughs> no no worries more space. and we're about to do a canvas refresh too guys i know this uh, it's starting uh, to get crowded yeah i don't mind i i kind of i'm enjoying hugging the perimeter it's kind of fun to like come up with things to draw in the little mm -hmm. uh, weird shapes. So yeah, keep I'll keep leave my keep the tail there. there. Please, please feel free to draw stuff that is interacting with my cat as well on top of it. So um, yeah. And that's that's been super fun about Magma as well. Seeing a lot of artists just sort of kind of start to interact. Um, yesterday, Craig Mullins was going around like um, kind of just sort of coming in and, and participating with the rendering. Um, and then he and Sparth got like working on a piece just at random. It was really cool. 
so yeah definitely feel free you guys if you want to collaborate too um so sophie did you want to tell us a little bit more about um some of the stuff that you're working on right now or uh you know just kind of share how you're enjoying the art world at the moment yeah um yeah i think you know these days it's all about like comfort and doing things that keep your mental health in a good spot so um that's kind of how i'm approaching things right now trying not to be too hard on myself or trying to let myself have a week or two of just being lazy um especially when it's like you can't even go outside to exercise because of all the smoke in the air you just kind of have to like be okay with with existing but um yeah i think what i'm drawing here is just (laughs) completely just trying to like um use the the tools i really liked dominique's uh fox and her inking style so i was trying to do some like play with the pressure sensitivity and just do like this heavy ink look um i'm also experiencing some lag so that's kind of like my way of making one stroke and then waiting for it to appear and then making another one and it's kind of like a zen it's like sort of a zen like process right now yeah and and sometimes slowing down is nice um but if you're if the lag's getting really bad for you are you working in chrome right now did you already go over to chrome uh yeah i'm in chrome um it's it comes and goes i think it's it's better right now um for sure all right cool well thanks for sharing um, and then we'll just go straight up to, I think it's uh, Sun Min. Yes. Working on some tomatoes, I think. Yeah, yeah. Tomatoes. any tomatoes. I was yeah. trying to go for persimmons, but I forgot how persimmons look. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, tomatoes, yes. Um, yeah, um, this is kind of like how I draw in comfort mode. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, I usually don't use a lot of opacity in my lines uh, when I, when I'm just kind of like just, uh, doing line drawings and, uh, just kind of exploring where the line just kind of like takes everything. And I just kind of keep spreading out. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, this, that's just, just kind of my process and just mindlessly drawing whatever, uh, since you, you guys all know that this doesn't make any sense. (laughs) Well, it it makes sense because it looks cool. I mean, I love it. That makes some sense. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's super cool. Everyone loves a cat too. Oh yeah, that's what what it was. Melanie, my good friend, who's drawing um, the beautiful couple on, on the right side. She was talking about my cat um, that was just sitting in the corner over there, but uh, she's gone. That's why I drew a cat. Yes, that is why. It's so cute. I love tomatoes. tomatoes. Yeah, tomatoes are the best. Yes. <laughs> Unless right. you have an acidic stomach, that's not good for you. It's true. It's true. <laughs> and I even love tomato haters because that means more tomatoes for me. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Somebody yeah. just just dropped in the chat. Love tomato cat. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. The tomato cat is great. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the north here. Up to looks like um, the cursor's moving fast. Oh yeah. Who's who's working on the portrait up here in the upper left hand corner? Oh, that's sorry, it's my um Chinese name, but hi, I'm Linda. <laughs> oh hey, yeah. No, I was trying to reconcile the names that were on the videos and the name that was on the uh on the cursor there. Yeah. So this is this is nice. Um do you wanna to talk to us just a little bit about, you know, you can talk to us about anything really. Um if you wanna to talk to us about what you're doing right now or something else oh, about your process. I'm just trying to get used to the, the tool and see to see like uh, what the capabilities are, mm-hmm. the opacity and the blending. But um, yeah, just that's it. It's just comfort food drawing again. It's just a face. Totally. And and I love I love that we get a chance to see that. Um, and I don't know how it, how it is for you guys. I don't know how often you get to kind of just show like what you're drawing because you're feeling really comfortable with it. But I know that for the audience, uh, for myself included, it's just really cool to see what you guys do and you're just like i'm just this is just a hang for me i'm just drawing and having fun there's no pressure um and i think it definitely encourages people to get in that kind of space too which is so important I forget who it was that mentioned mental health but i that's i couldn't agree more all right let's see i'm gonna come over to let's see dominique is this your it looks like a coyote here in the middle 
Yes. Awesome. Can you talk to us a little bit about this guy? Um, yeah, so I love drawing animals so much. Um, that is my comfort zone. That is where I always go to. Um, I sometimes have drawn animals for work, sometimes people, but I just naturally go towards animals. And when it comes to canines, something draws me towards either coyotes or foxes. Just, I don't know, but... Um, yeah, I just wanted to draw something with a sun, an excuse to draw a cactus. Because I like <laughs> awesome. them, but I haven't drawn them in a while. <laughs> yeah. And this is really cool. Thank you. I, like I love the style. Yeah. <laughs> Yay, thank you. All right, I'm going to swing over to, to Alex now. <laughs> How are you doing, Alex? I'm doing good, man. How are you? I'm doing all right. Yeah, you do. I now I know that you just got finished doing like a big, huge, long uh, demonstration, so you don't have to go into that mode right now. But do you want to just talk to us a little bit about how your how you approach your process, or maybe what you're doing right now? Sure. Uh, yeah, this is kind of like um, I do a lot of super, super quick kind of decompression drawing, usually on like sticky notes and stuff. Cool. And recently, I've been trying to kind of translate that directly into. Um, uh, painting. So I've, I've been doing a lot of direct color painting and just like, you know, zero opacity, zero pressure sensitivity, I'm just kind of trying to have fun and be more adamant and diligent with my color picking. Yeah. You know, just kind of trying to paint with some shapes, you know, paint some funny stuff. Cars and weird robots and monsters are kind of my, my, my go to and my comfort zone. So that's awesome. Yeah, uh, Sparth was just talking about that yesterday, um, how he used so many completely opaque brushes and how that forces you to kind of let go of some baggage, but then to really make a commitment to your graphical shapes and how you're going to get things to read. And uh, I tried a little bit of that myself, and it's super helpful. Yeah, I've had a, I go on and off with using like really soft brushes to get nice smooth form gradations and things. So mm -hmm. it's, I, I, because of that, some of my silhouettes and shapes and things can get kind of muddy. So going back in and using some of these harder brushes has been super helpful for me as far as like, you know, taking care of my edges and my shapes and making sure things feel polished. Totally. Yeah. And this is super fun. <laughs> I like what you're doing here. I like okay. these two guys in the car. They're sort of like having the time having of their lives. Fun. Everyone else is just along for the ride. That's great. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what we're doing, right? Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Uh, Victoria, I think we've got you here. Yeah. Hi. Looks, looks like kind of a ranger sort of thing you got going on here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I my favorite thing about art is just kind of storytelling. Um, you know, now I feel like my art is really just a, a means to be able to tell stories. So whenever I start something, I always kind of want to have some kind of story going on. And um, I kind of just drew this girl and she was talking to somebody and I didn't know who. Um, and my comfort drawing lately has just been like D&D &D characters because during quarantine, I'm in three games right now. <laughs> yes, so and, good. Yeah, I'm DMing for the first time, so that's been fun. Oh. Um, but yeah, so like my, uh, you know, so now I just kind of think about like, oh, okay, like how can I, you know, how do you, how do you play with like costumes and stuff? So I, I, she's like a ranger princess who has like a, um, like a fiend kind of, but then she has like two, you know, like I drew one and then I thought it'd be funny if it was kind of like, a good angel bad angel kind of thing mm -hmm. but they're kind of like funny little demony guys um so yeah i mean i just kind of love the idea of you know characters contrasting with each other um you know having like a different emotion and responding to each other in a way that feels um like it gives them personality and some kind of story even if i just made it up just now <laughs> for sure that's awesome and the the little the blue guy on her shoulder he looks a little concerned to me like he, he look, he's like, oh no, she's yeah. talking to him. He he's he's gets pushed around a lot. I think. Yeah. He, uh, he's the weaker of the two, but he usually <laughs> has good ideas. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love I love how like a whole story can just emerge like that. Um, right yeah. In the blue. That's super cool. And then like I don't want to date myself, but like way back in the day when I started playing D and D, what I loved about it was that it was basically character design. Like. Yeah. I, I couldn't like I loved I couldn't wait to start drawing my character. Um, because the dice basically just randomized everything for you. And then you got all these prompts and you got just to you go to town. Um, super yeah, totally. Stuff. 
Yeah, is anybody else here uh, doing some online gaming or some some D and D in quarantine with some other groups? So I was going to ask, which way are you guys taking the new players? <laughs> right on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for the current game I'm GMing, actually, I'm probably going to do a little um, supplement so other people can play. It's a homebrew, um, and the world is kind of a little witch academia, witch hat atelier oh, kind snap. of world. Um, in. <laughs> so it's all casters, which is like very complicated to balance. But So everyone has to play a witch, <laughs> uh, which, is, cool. which it's been really fun, though, and I'm learning a lot. Also, like, yeah, I, like the, the things that you don't expect your players to do, like, I had like a rival witch school come and they fought, but then I was like, oh, they're going to be like mean girls. But then my players were way meaner. (laughs) (laughs) That's amazing. (laughs) Oh, shit. (laughs) That sounds super fun. And the chat thinks it sounds really fun too. People are all like, oh, I want to play too. Um, Yeah, I'm I'm developing the the supplement right now. So hopefully I'll just put it out in a PDF and it should be pretty simple. But I've been like doodling art for it for a long time now. That's awesome. No, I've got a I've got a colleague uh, from uh, from Noman um, who I he's he's moved on to work at a studio, and we still we're still on the same uh, campaign that he started for us. Uh, oh my gosh, other colleagues, yeah. But we're in it for the long haul. This is like a it's a it's a super hardcore. You know, we're gonna level these nice. characters up to like level you know I don't know seventy five or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, super fun. I would love to see a stream of artists all playing a role playing game together. <laughs> that, that would be amazing. Possible. You know, you could you could use magma. Everybody could just kind of be doodling what what they're oh, imagining yeah. is happening in the game, and you know, the DM could be doing their thing and like I don't Pitch know. Pitch it to Lightbox. <laughs> Heck yeah, no, or just Next just year. go rogue and start something. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no. <laughs> my, in fact, my colleague just texted me. He said, uh, "He said, oh, invite Alex to our game. If Alex is looking for a <laughs> for a D and D game to play, and we we actually just lost a player, so doors open, man. If you want to take it, yeah, um, it's a uh, Kathleen, uh, my girlfriend, and I. Kathleen, she's in the chat as well. We've both been looking oh. for some games to play. So. Oh, cool. Well, you're you're welcome. Uh, he's the DM, and so he said, yeah, bring him in if he wants to come in. Um, and uh, maybe I'll shoot you a text after our email after this little session. For sure, man." Um, all right, cool. Let's see. I don't feel like I've gotten at everybody yet. Um, and I hate to put people on the spot, but is there anybody? Let's see. We've talked to Victoria, Melanie. A duck in boots. A duck in boots. <laughs> yes, Kathleen. Right? Is that you? Hello. Yeah. The duck in boots. I think I already talked, but. Oh, yeah, yeah, you did. Because we talked about your, I think we talked about your, your cat. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Is that Pierre? Cool. That is Pierre. He's so fluffy. He's like a little Maine Coon mix. Um, and he loves to watch bugs. <laughs> Beautiful. He like sits and watches them out the window. It's so cute. I'm looking at Sunmin, is that you? The piece was never an option. Yeah. It's Petal Zeus game. Have you played that? I love that game. Yeah, that's kind of what this was inspired by. I was like, just like a grumpy goose. <laughs> he's kind of scare me, so. That was so terrifying. He's, yeah, he's a rough negotiator. <laughs> yeah. And uh, for, forgive me if we're on lapse of memory. Uh, Sunmin, have we, ever, have we talked yet? Uh, yeah, 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 we have. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. I think I got to everybody. All right. And we're about at the point where we're ready to refresh our canvas. Um, All right. Yeah, so warm ups, warm ups are just about over. I'm gonna save this image. Yeah, save it mine. Wow. Oh yeah, and um, what I'll do is um, I won't like erase this canvas or anything. This will still stay on the interwebs for posterity, so you can continue to use this link. You can save it out. You can even come back later and draw on it tomorrow if you want. Um, but I'll start up a brand new link. Um, let me just work on that while you guys finish up here. that little guy quickly before we go to <laughs> I'm drawing I'm drawing one of those uh the nerd mascots from memory <laughs> oh I miss nerds that's all I ever think about when I paint this little colored body oh. yes <laughs> it, it all started with a jackbox tv <laughs> yeah oh, yeah because they only have like pink green and blue as like the colors so I just started like painting like nerds it's great. I 
just kind of want to like go around people's drawings and just make jokes. <laughs> just write jokes. That's all <laughs> I want to do. Yeah, someone could write dialogue for my characters because they're talking. <laughs> Don't know what they're saying. Hmm, let me think. Hmm. They're arguing. Mm hmm. I can't think of something clever. I love these little plant creatures on the bottom left. They're so cute. Is that like a little yeah. lithops creature? Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, so it's, cute. Um, those, those are my succulent characters I make comics about. They're so <laughs> um, cute. Yeah, one is, one is a Haworthia head and the other one is a Clay, I can't never say it, Clea Spilos Nelly. It's kind of like yeah. a lithops. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> All right, I'm going to bring in the new canvas. I'll send you guys the link uh, once I've got it in the screen share here. There we go. All right. Is that in the new chat or is it in the chat? I'm about to put it in the chat right now. Okay. Can we close out the old one then? You don't have to close it. Um, you just All you need to do is just uh, come over to the link that I'll, that I'll share now in the, in the chat. I like the mask edition to um, But if you are concerned about performance issues, internet stuff, you can close it as long as you save that link somewhere, like paste it to a, paste it to your clipboard. Um, you can come back to it. Um, it'll. Well, we should. You know what? We should have put our names down so that if we wanted to like tag each other afterwards, that would have been nice. Oh, oh yeah. for sure. Well, and you know what? Take your time and do that, guys. Yeah, let's do that. Feel free. Yeah, I don't know anyone's name. <laughs> are we writing our Instagrams on here? Or, or oh, names. Yeah. Mine is the same. Mine is both. I feel bad, Jared, that on the last canvas, you were stuck in the waiting room and you got almost no space to work with. So I'm glad that you're one of the first ones in on the new canvas. Yeah, kind of. Um, yeah, I'm still kind of dead in the water. I've been <laughs> enjoying watching everybody, uh, but I'll get I'll get like a couple lines in and then it just stops completely so oh, weird. I don't quite know how to fix that but everyone's doing such amazing stuff I don't want to don't want to pull focus is it still is it still lagging a lot for you um it's not so much lagging as in nothing is happening so I got as far as that circle <laughs> or oh, no. okay. and no matter what if I refresh then I'll get maybe a second of drawing in and then it all shuts down again. Okay. I don't know what that is. I did I did switch to Chrome. Um, it actually seemed to work a little better on Safari. Surprise. So uh, did we get the new link yet? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it should have shown up in the chat and Zoom. If nobody has, if anybody's missing that, I can send it again. Yeah, I, yeah, I tried both links and they're the old one. Oh, okay, here. So you might have just sent it to Derek. <laughs> Five o'clock. Oh, I still don't see it. Weird. Is it in yeah. the Zoom chat or the... Um... I might have just sent it to like one person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so and you know what? I'll go down to the... Um... Oh, is it there? There should be a magma chat too. Hold on. Oh, oh yeah. Cool. I can see the magma chat. Can somebody oh, paste the link into the magma chat as well um, for anybody that needs to get it there? Oh, okay. Can I get it in the Zoom? I'm I'm going off of my iOS, so yeah. I can't click on. Yeah, no, it's it should be in the Zoom. I've pasted it there a few times. Hmm. But it's not there. Weird. Yeah, I don't see it either. Oh, you know what? Oh my gosh. Okay, everybody, can, everybody has permission to laugh at me now. I've been sending it privately to Jared. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> okay, all right. There we go. Solved. There it is. Yes. <laughs> there you go. There was no, and trust me, there was no agenda to give Jared most of the canvas <laughs> whatsoever. Right, no, no, no money exchanged hands, nothing of that sort. I got two dead squiggles on there. Wait, okay. we're supposed to, we have a, a theme this time, right? Yeah, so I'm going to share okay. the prompt with you guys. Oh, shit. All right. It, it's, and it's a super simple prompt, and really, you know, if if it sparks something for you, then then run with it. If you want to hijack it and turn it into something else, do that. Or if you want to hundred percent ignore it, you can do that too. Um, but the 
just in the spirit of what Magma <laughs> Studio is, um, the prompt uh, is going to be the idea of Oops. having superpowers. Um, so I think like Magma is a great example of like a superpower that develops because of a limitation, right? Like this new thing got innovated and now we all have this new ability to draw together that we didn't have before because of the limitation of social distancing. So that just got me thinking to say, here's a really simple prompt. What would be a superpower that you've always wanted to have? And you can choose to portray that in any sort of way that you want. Um, or if you get a completely different random idea, feel free to run with that too. It's just important. <laughs> mm -hmm. Super potato. And I'm not, and I'm not saying that everybody now has to like character design superheroes. You can just like, <laughs> tell whatever story you want to tell. What about a superpower where your laundry is instantly done? Is that a superpower? Uh, it's definitely. Okay. Uh, we we do laundry in our home for five people, and yeah, that would be an amazing superpower. <gasps> oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> one of the one of the powers that came up, I think, in the very first session that we did um, with for this jam with Lightbox, um, was the power of whenever I take a nap, time stops. Oh my god! I was literally just drawing that. No way. <laughs> Look. See. Okay. Well, no, that I idea never happened. Person. It never happened. <laughs> I want the superpower of eating everything. Do it. <laughs> The superpower of eating everything you want without getting weak. <laughs> I'm drawing that also. I eat with no consequences. Yes. <laughs> All the good food, please. No exercise. <laughs> oh, and you guys can feel totally free as because we've got we got a bit of time now. Um, we're we're starting into the second hour of our stream. Um, you can interact with each other. If any of you guys wind up starting to like collab impromptu, like do whatever you want. Have a good time with it. There's so many different things happening right now. What are you? Oh, is that his brain? Thank oh you. Yeah. I like that. Yes, yeah, so this is going to be a mind reading Bashan. So that's the that's what it inspired me. Is the superpowers. I want a Bashan that can read minds. No, oh, I like it. You can leave it. Why did I choose to draw drops if I don't know how people hold them? Superpowers that I can steal other people's food. <laughs> and they oh, don't no. they don't know it or or just they don't know it's it. too bad for them. Too bad for them and they don't know it. <laughs> can you imagine getting food for free for the rest of your life and how much money you would save? Oh, that'd be great. Mm. That was my plan at Netflix before they sent this one. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Before um, they sent us home at Netflix, I actually was working from home because I took like a little bit of vacation. And then I would just like visit every once a week. And then I would take my backpack and I would like hang it and on my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> now go to the cafeteria or not the cafeteria but the you know like all the free stuff like the drinks and the ice cream yeah. the frozen food i would literally just fill my backpack up and these people like who'd sit near there they would kind of like be like <laughs> they'd be watching me and like follow me <laughs> to the elevator <laughs> and i'm like come on come i mean on, it should make it. sense right artist food you know i may sense. or may not have been going home with cold brews in my bag every night <laughs> Hey, you work there. It's for you. Yeah. No, at, at DreamWorks, we have free food also. But for some reason, the free food at other studios tastes better to me. So I'm always asking people to invite me over to their studio. 
to check out the wares. <laughs> the grass is always greener. I know. Always. Yeah. So um, it's, it sounds so spoiled and bratty. I complained so much about the DreamWorks food, and now I'm just like, oh, it's so much better at DreamWorks. I have to cook now every day. <laughs> have you heard Nathan Fox's story about a similar thing? Because when no. he, he was he was working at DreamWorks, and then uh, across the street, Disney um, was bringing him in to to uh, teach to teach there uh, with with some of their artists. And so he would <laughs> he tells a story of how he what was it? I forget which place he he felt had the better snacks. But um, he would just, you know, because he's in both locations, he'd be able to just go for, like, the best stuff from each place. It's I'm funny because oh, at, at DreamWorks, not the snacks are not all the same across teams also. So sometimes we'd, like, go case out the other teams and see who had better snacks. Oh, okay. And go into their kitchens. Yeah, people not, will budget not... by their own. Yeah, it, it really, it is really kind of that. <laughs> Well, the cafeteria at DreamWorks is really nice. At least it was back in the early 2000s when I visited there. Oh, no, yeah, it was absolutely nice. I was just um, just selfish. <laughs> By the way, I heard this was from another another one of these Zoom drawings. Um, and I'm not talking about you, Linda. But apparently there was somebody at DreamWorks who was a twin. But then, like, the other person didn't work in the industry or something. But then they would, like, kind of switch their uh uh the the id so that the other <laughs> come in and like take yoga classes and have oh my god stuff. oh my gosh yeah. is that true because every people were talking about it i don't know i've never heard this before oh, really? um I, i've joked with helen in the past about that she she would about switching our ids and going to our respective places of work but I, I don't have enough money to be sued by Disney, so I'm not going to do that. No, it's not, it's not a good idea. <laughs> no. She was like, just do this meeting for me. I was like, no, thank you. I don't no. <laughs> I remember I you guys talked about joke. that for I April swear. Fool's Day to swap, and then that didn't happen. <laughs> nice. Um, I also heard that um, a guy from Disney had a wife who worked at DreamWorks, and the husband kept coming over every single day for lunch, and then eventually they kicked him out and told him he can't come anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh I, I've seen people really like go ham at the cafeteria like they'll bring their like own to go containers from home and just fill her up and it's just um you know props to that you know guilty <laughs> First thing I had until I was like wow I've gained 10 pounds <laughs> they don't do that at Adobe we have to pay for our food it's cheaper and you have a million options but you still gotta pay at Netflix, Although, like, uh, oh, go ahead. Go oh, ahead. Sorry, no, no. I was gonna just say that, like, sometimes I, I, I like the paid food at studios. Like, I like the Disney paid food a lot for some reason. I don't know why. I think it's just because every time I've gone, they have a, they've had like mac and cheese. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I think that there's more options when you have to pay for it, but yeah, uh, you know, it doesn't taste quite as good. <laughs> <laughs> um, at Netflix, we had a. Because, like, if you ever, anybody who works on Netflix, you could go to the main Netflix building where all the tech people are, like, the live action people are. And they had, like, floors where they had Apple products. Have you guys ever been there and, like, took a bunch of shit? The vending machines? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that in the cafeteria. What? You get, like, free I, I've nasty. seen them before. What? I've seen them before. Yeah, it's, like, That's so You'd be surprised. Like, nobody, yeah. like, really goes in there and raids it. I mean, but here's the thing. Those AirPods are so expensive. Just taking those is like, Can't you know. not look in our closet. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, they have them on like three different floors there. So basically I would go on the, the highest floor that has it. And I would just kind of walk down. <laughs> <laughs> go where it's private. <laughs> oh my God, you guys. <laughs> so funny. Wait, is this being recorded and being posted? Because I don't... <laughs> sorry to interrupt guys uh, i got a message for jared in the chat from magma studio from the magma studio team uh they were saying uh they're not exactly sure what the problem is it's happening uh for you but one thing you could try would be playing with some of the brush settings try mm -hmm. turning them on and off uh, try turning on and off the stabilizer in there um and the then stabilizer. yeah i think it's probably like a smooth oh. smooth brush stroke that might be creating okay. some lag 
And then the other thing they said you can try is um, checking the checkbox next to density um, mm-hmm. and then changing the minimum size and hardness settings. So it might be lagging out on some of those brush settings. I'll give it a try. Is there an sure. undo button on this? It should just be. I've been doing same. control Z and it yeah. works. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm on my iPad, so I don't have a keyboard. Oh. oh. Is, Played it, yourself, uh, Vicky. Have you tried the two finger tap? <laughs> nope, it does not work. I okay. have tried that. Oh. Man. Yeah, I I was using it um, with a keyboard um, on my Cintiq, and it was because my hands just naturally went to the the uh, Adobe shortcuts, and it was like, oh, this okay, great. I'm just drawing more D and D characters. I have nothing <laughs> in my brain except D and D. Well, D and D characters have powers, so. Yeah, she's going to be some kind of a mage, sorcerer. Or, or I don't the, know. The power could be things. that you could become your D and D characters. <laughs> that would be cool. So, what's everybody's like favorite uh, distant quarantine activity to do with your friends outside of uh, video games and D and Ds or something? Is there like, because I I need ideas. <laughs> Picnics at the park. Yeah. Yeah, picnic. I was going to say park time. Uh, outdoor activities. You could go on a hike, maybe. Probably not right now, actually. If you live in a smoky <laughs> spot. It's been um, a Animal Crossing for me, so. Animal Crossing's <laughs> great. And Jackbox TV games. Um, what else? Yeah, um, playing Code Names online is really fun. I don't know if you've ever played Code Names, but it's like a word guessing game and it can get really wacky and they oh, have a free online version it's that uh the tabletop game code names right it's just yeah. like a, it's like a, so, a board game yeah exactly so there's like a website where they just generate all the words for you and you can just like share it with a bunch of people and just basically play over video chat and it's it's definitely um a very good time that's cool well, and actually, I think a lot of the the really popular, at least a few of the really popular tabletop games have like developed like iOS app versions that you can network and, and stuff like that. I, haven't I mean, tried yeah, I've been playing my DD games on Roll20, so. That's a, that's what all... my party has been using. It's a great resource. Yeah, it's awesome. Do you use D&D Beyond for your character and stuff like that? What? What's that? Uh, D&D Beyond. Have you tried that? Oh, um. I've used it as a reference, but um, not really much more than that. Okay. Part yeah. of it is because I'm doing a homebrew, so. Oh <laughs> right, of to. course, yeah. No, the, I and I just have a free account for D and D Beyond, but they let me part my character there, and they've got a great uh, dice engine um, that just oh, works cool. right off your character sheet. You can just click, you know, any of the, the stats on your character sheet, and it'll automatically roll the correct dice. Yeah, the them adding the virtual dice over quarantine was such a good move. While we're on the topic of D&D, I'm just going to throw it out there that if anyone knows people that know how to write rule sets and things, I'm trying to make an obscure pen and paper game. So, uh, How to write what? Sorry? Rule sets. So like, like a, I want to make oh. a paper game for one of my kids. So you should game. talk to my brother. He, uh, he used to work at Fantasy Flight. He did the Star Wars game. We're going uh, gonna to talk after the stream. That's awesome. Yeah. My brother's a game designer. He does board games. He did this. He did the Power Rangers game that was just up. Um, he just did like the Sonic board game. He did. He did the Game of Thrones like trivia game. <laughs> but like wow. his whole thing is like writing rule sets for games because like that. That's just what he does. Um, we did a. We did a. Uh, we did Kickstarter together. Where we had a card game. By the way, it's available called Bargain Quest. If anyone wants to play a fantasy game where you play a shop owner and you try to um, keep your heroes alive, but if they die, it's not that big a deal. <laughs> Four <laughs> heroes will come to town. <laughs> and you just try to like make the most amount of money by selling them stuff. I would play that game. <laughs> Amazing. It used to be called Adventure Capitalist, but then someone else had that, game, had that name. So. It sounds like a very appropriate name, though. Yeah, it's really fun. Um, it's really easy and like it's like a middle of the road board game where it's not like super hardcore with like miniatures and shit. It's like very um, like kids can play if you're like over ten. 
that's pretty much oh, wow. you can still play it that's cool but it's still got a lot of depth like it's been um very well reviewed mm -hmm. and for doing homebrews and developing your own rpg i don't even know if it's still around but it was a big deal back in the the mid to late 80s um when it was when you got beat up for playing D, &D at school <laughs> um, that's when I started, but it was called GURPS and it, the whole thing was, it was designed f to be kind of a, uh, a, a blank canvas container for you to build out your own world and kind of took care of the, some of the rule sets for you and that kind of stuff. Oh, that's cool. It was an, a GURPS was an acronym and I'm not nerdy enough to know, to remember what that stood for, but it had something to do with like multi-universal role-playing yada, yada. Something universal role plays. Yeah. It was my, my friends would do that in high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was really cool because people were coming up with cool ideas. Both of the cats have come to join me. <laughs> Just gray blobs. I know that everybody kind of started co ha having to cook at home. Has anybody like mastered one thing? Mastered, like, I mastered Patsy you. <gasps> nice. Oh, nice. Uh, it's so good. <laughs> um definitely baking i've been trying well I, I haven't made bread in a while but um i've been trying to perfect a brownie recipe and like a cake recipe just like all the basics nice, um, nice. all dairy and egg free it's great <laughs> somebody in the chat just said i mastered the cheese sandwich <laughs> love that <laughs> i mean it, there's a lot to master there depending on what kind it's of cheese a, you use cool. yeah, yeah true. True. I went full into right? sourdough. That's what I did for mm. quarantine. Oh, Sorry, Linda. I killed your killed your starter. <laughs> I killed it. What? I think my starter is actually dead. I haven't fed it in a while. We'll see. But my starter is dead. The one that you gave me. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, Jared. Well, are things working Eugene better fish? for you now? Yep. Finally got. Good. 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 Got it going. <laughs> you can tell because I'm actually drawing something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> figured it out yeah i i learned a ton from that uh the uh, alien outlaws workshop that you did oh thank you yeah no yeah. just the way that the, just the really simple process of the way that you approach your armature and then start building your shapes on top of it and stuff yeah um I'm doing right now <laughs> yeah yeah i'm i'm a real nerd for process i love studying other people's processes um because there's always something to take um to make your own process better yeah i uh that was very important to me when, when putting stuff out there. I wanted to make something kind of uh, affordable uh, and, and focus on just fast ideation for beginners and professionals. So I really was trying to just strip down the process um, so that a lot of people could follow it. Uh, and I'm still, I'm almost done with part two because I, I got to uh, line and flat color yeah in the in the first one and then i just start to turn forms with a flat color uh mainly using curve layers so i'll use mm -hmm. a curve layer for the uh highlight and then another one for uh Oops, shadow sorry shades. shit <laughs> <laughs> oh shit Control Z. i'm sorry I, I don't have a keyboard oh, oh, there's an undo ooh. at the top oh, it's the back, back error oh, yeah. it's, it's just expensive. up at the top Oops. I could do this. I don't know. My drive is great when it hit orange. Thank you. Sorry. Oh, man. I was Sorry. excited to, to start over. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like that. <laughs> that was the underpainting for everyone to start painting. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Burn Sienna. Yeah, Jared, um, uh, Kyle was using a, a similar approach in his uh, creature design course, um, kind of non destructively working curve layers for your highlights and shadows. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. um, kind of creating a curve layer and then masking it in and out. That's that's interesting because um, when I had come up with a technique uh, that was well after the time I was teaching. So it sounds like we both kind of got to the same place. Yeah, with, uh, he he uh, mentioned. Magically. Like, I think he and a couple other guys over at Aaron Sims kind of stumbled into it, and mm -hmm. he was saying something about uh, it had to do with the way that ZBrush does things. Um, and I don't know much more than that, but yeah, mm -hmm. but I mean, yeah. innovation tends to happen that way, right? Like multiple people stumble, stumble into it, um, because it works. It's good. Well, a good friend of mine actually taught me about curve layers, uh, very talented guy, uh, Anthony Francisco, and I've been using it 
um, to turn form ever since, just because you can do something in line, go to flat color, and then just by using those curve layers, you can uh, you know add your highlights and shadows, and form instantly starts to turn, and it's it's non destruct destructive, and uh, it's also very similar to to matte painting techniques that I've oh, seen. Okay, yeah. Used That's not layers. So it is very effective. Um, I don't know if we have curves here. <laughs> We've got, I know we got layer blend modes, clipping masks. Um, I don't know what kind of like, yeah, uh, filter layers or those kind of things we can, or adjustment layers we can throw on there. There's lots of adjustment layers, it looks like. Oh. There's so many. That's exciting. All right. In a few minutes here, guys, I'm going to take another quick tour because I'm, I'm really looking forward to hearing from each of you about, about your, your power. We've heard a little bit so far, but I mean, I'm just looking at the way that these drawings are coming out and I'm, I'm excited. Using curve layers is exciting. I've not ever done that, but I can kind of imagine what you guys are talking about. It reminds me a little bit, um, my boyfriend, what he'll do is he pretty much doesn't use color at all because industrial design, of course. Um, and instead he uses opacity on the layer. So he'll just literally only work in black and just lay down different opacities of the layers, right? Like this layer is black, but it's at 20% opacity. This layer is at 40% opacity. It's kind of an interesting way to structure your values. Um, but again, if you're thinking about curves and shapes and ellipses, it's, I think, a little bit easier than maybe a creature form to work with that. Yeah, for me, I started in like traditional painting. So I, for me, it's just like laying the exact color, kind of like that, kind of like the a la prima method. I think like that's kind of how I learned, which is it's Oops, super sorry. different. It's a really good book, though, if anyone's ever read it. What, which book was that? A la Prima. Oh, okay. By Richard Schmidt. Richard. Yeah, that's a really important one for anyone who wants to do, like, characters or just, it's a very basic painting technique. Um, but, yeah, it's great. It's definitely, like, a required, required reading for in our school. <laughs> yeah, likewise. I think the second version just came out, too, if it's got, like, a, a bunch of amendments to the first book and then new ones. Oh, really? Because it was really expensive online to get for a while. Yeah, and that, that's the, the shitty part about that was if you bought it through his website, it was always available, but no one told you that he had his own printing on the website. I don't know if you guys can see the uh, chat, but you're getting a lot of love in the chat right now. Everybody's loving what they're seeing. Um, we've got a we got a good question that's come in that if any of you'd like to take a stab at it, um, Legendary Psyche says, I've been doing digital art for a year now, but I'd like to draw on more than just my phone. What beginner drawing tablet would you guys suggest um, for a small budget? iPad, I think. Well, iPad. You can, yeah. you can add draw on a basic small iPad. Budget. Right? Yeah. yeah. And Intuos can swing it on us on a laptop. If you're working on a laptop, like you just uh, started school. I only ever had a laptop until I was like uh, like a junior in college. Um, and I usually relied on school computers, but I had a laptop and an Intuos plugged into it. And even that worked fine until I um, like could afford to buy a Cintiq. And then I bought one used, which was great. Great option. If you can find an artist yeah. that's selling a used uh, Cintiq, that's a good way to get one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. They last forever. So it's, they do. Yeah. They're great use. My last one lasted 10 years. Yep. Oh, wow. Which one did yeah. you have? Longer than, uh, I had a 21 inch. Yeah. Um, God, I, I don't remember the model number anymore, but it was 21 inches and I bought it in like 2008. Yeah, no, those the things really are still trucking. And the, with the gray housings, they're like bulletproof. You could throw those off the roof. Oh, I remember those. Damn, those are old school. I know that the, the latest and maybe the last couple of just base model iPads, um, which are usually around like you can get them on sale for like around 320 or so or sometimes less. You, those will work with an Apple Pencil. Um, and then you can bust yeah. into uh, stuff like Procreate is a great place um, to get into some digital painting without without too much technical stuff to learn. Um, then like Adobe Fresco is awesome too. If you, especially if you like the feel of like traditional medium, like their watercolor brush is really cool. Yeah, that I just is... downloaded that. Yay, really? thank you for downloading it. That's the program I work on. Fresco, who works on where? I do. Oh, okay. I love it. It's so, 
um, intuitive. I, I, I also use Procreate. Uh, yeah, of course. I just started uh, Fresco and the uh, pen sensitivity is incredible. So it's like, it's, it's like the, it feels very familiar to, to, uh, to Photoshop and I, yep. I really love it. Um, that was part of the point, as you can imagine, that's what the team wanted to do. They're like, how do we make all the awesome drawing bits of Photoshop, but yep. just on its own? And I was super confused too, because at first I downloaded Photoshop and that's just like- Oh, yep. Nope, no painting there. That's yeah. why we made Fresco because Photoshop on the iPad had to focus on one thing or the other, right? Like, mm -hmm. like think about it, all the apps are going to focus situations, right? Like Photoshop is this giant beast that does literally everything. You could edit video in Photoshop if you're yep. like that committed. Yeah, yeah you can, you it. totally yeah. can. Yeah. So the team was like, listen, this is not the future. We need focused apps. And so that's why Photoshop on the iPad is just the photo stuff. And then Fresco is where all the drawings going to work. I literally downloaded it and uh, spent a ton of time last night for the first time. It was incredible. It was really good. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> I want to see your stuff. We have to connect so I can look at your stuff and brag to the team about it because they're super engaged and they love seeing artwork. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I have art station, but yeah, if I we'll I'll figure it out. A message, yeah. Is there a one-to-one -one import of ABR files in Fresco? Yes, there is. Great. They should work the same, and if they don't work the same, you just need to complain at us so we fix it. Oh, I haven't the the um, the brushes. That that's what you mean, ABR. Yeah. yeah. So your ABR files that you like in Photoshop will go work in Fresco perfectly fine. And what? yes, um, if you're a free user though, that's one of the things that's behind the paywall is the brushes. But you can Same use here's Photoshop's? here's the secret. You can use libraries if you're a free user, and you can import as many brushes if you want. Don't tell anybody I told you that. Oh. You just told the entire <laughs> just planet. Tell Don't tell anybody. Just tell anybody. <laughs> I don't Don't tell stream. anyone. It's actually it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> That's super cool. I did not know that. Yeah, it's totally fun. So you can use whatever brushes you want in my ability. Well, I love the way the uh, the, the the pencils and because uh, you've got the you've got the more like typical digital art type brushes, but then you've got the brushes that are designed to emulate traditional media. Yeah, and, the live brushes. Oh, Those man. are the water. So like literally, there were Adobe scientists in the basement with literal paint screwing around and then trying to figure out how to approximate that into a rendering engine. And I'm not even joking. That's, so that's so cool. That's why the, with the watercolors, if you get blue and then you get yellow, it will make green, like legit make green for you. And they're always trying to improve it and make it really more realistic. So like for the watercolors, the they want the color to pool on the outside edges, just like watercolor. And like they're going wild. It's, it's so really cool. Awesome. Well, and like I started using the watercolor brush for the first time just standing at the Adobe booth last year. Yeah. And and if you've done real watercolor before, it's amazing how quickly you just adapt to it in Fresco. Yeah. It just yeah. does what it's supposed to do. No, that's so good. I'm so glad. Oh, now I need to use Fresco. Well, yeah. definitely play yeah. around with it. Hey, I, I'm an artist too. So like, no shit. Like, I get it. You love the <laughs> thing you draw in and like do what you love. I'm not going to stop nobody from drawing. You should draw on whatever, whether it's a pencil or whether it's ketchup, you need to draw. <laughs> you have the, um, cause I noticed in Photoshop, there were these oil paint brushes. Yeah. The mixer brushes. Uh, in, mm, is that what it was? <laughs> we, I think they're called mixer brushes. At least that's what Kyle. Yeah. Cause called. mixer brushes in Photoshop are, are great. I love, I love working with them, but I, I don't think that's what it was mm, in, okay. in Photoshop app. And I okay. couldn't find them in Fresco. And I had already, uh, because I thought that the Photoshop was it, I already started oh, yeah. messing around with those. And, and they were amazing for drawing. And I, I couldn't find them in, in uh, Fresco. If you put them in a library, they should show up at the bottom of your pixel brush list. So at the very bottom is where all your libraries come in. And if you have any trouble, we'll connect afterwards and I'll help you. Awesome. Yeah, I might, I might harass you because those Please. are good. I'm here for that. And I'm actually here for this. Like, it's my literal job. So if anybody else has questions, including the people that are on the stream, you can find me on the internet at Renee DeSherry, and I'm here for you. Hey, Renee, do you know if they are planning on doing any sort of a desktop version of uh, Fresco or if they're planning on bringing oh, yeah. some of those brushes into Photoshop? Um, so 
On the Photoshop side, I don't know. It is dubious just because they're really complicated. That's one of the reasons why actually in Fresco released, we are on Windows, so we were on such limited devices because the live brushes use the GPU. They are like completely dependent on it. So um, we just finally opened up to so much more, like so many more GPUs. So basically if you have an NVIDIA card that's like better than like, I don't know, one from like two years ago, you're gonna be fine. So it cool. is free on Windows right now. So not just the iPad. Oh, whoa, you can get Fresco for Windows? Yep. Oh, snap, okay. And then don't forget that it round trips back and forth with Photoshop. So like mm -hmm. if you're on your iPad and you're having fun and you're drawing in Fresco, when you open up Creative Cloud on your desktop, it'll just automatically transfer straight to Photoshop and you can keep working. I know exactly what I'm doing after this stream. Mm. <laughs> I'm so glad. Have fun with it and make us make it better, you know, because like we're here for that. Complain to us. It is okay if, if you have complaints as long as it helps. Well, and the team there at Adobe is super cool. Like everybody that yeah. was at the booth last year, like really fun to work with and like when you guys say like reach out and talk to us you really mean it um, <laughs> yep. super cool they're passionate about art like all of them are such passionate like art themes and i just feel at home because of that it's really nice to be on a team with just full of people who are just freaks about art that's but, totally how i feel about working at noman um, yeah it's it doesn't feel like you're working for for a school it feels like you're working at a studio right um, cause everybody, it doesn't matter if you're working in an administrative position, like everybody who works there is, is an art nerd to, to one degree that. or another. Yeah. All right. I'm going to start the, the, the great canvas tour. Let's see. And I'm going to start in a different place this time. I am going to go up to the noodles because I've been watching those noodles cause I'm hungry. So we'll start with the noodles and I forget who was working on this. Yeah, who is working on this? I just want to eat with no consequences ever yeah. and as much as possible Perfect. at all times. Like, I yeah. don't want like heart disease or anything like that. I just want to be able to eat anything I want. Like Paula Deen's fried butter balls. I definitely want to eat those. Oh. All the food. I I will watch your superhero movie and and read the comic because I would love to be able to do that too. I don't know why the universe ordered it that way. That those things I, yeah, are not disassociated. Terrible for you. <laughs> Carbs, delicious. <laughs> terrible for you. And so it, yours is yours also the same one. Uh, someone was talking earlier about the ability to just like steal people's food. That's no, that was me. not me. That's me. Oh, okay. Right below it. <laughs> All right. Then I'm going to go down there. We'll talk about that. <laughs> That's what she's doing in the room. <laughs> yes. My ability is to be able to steal anybody's food without them knowing with no consequences. Awesome. So I don't have to spend money on it, you know? That's without I, without consequences just for you or without consequences for anybody? I'm sorry, I'm making it ethical now. I should have done that. Because, <laughs> I mean, that would be amazing if people didn't even know that you were stealing their food, right? Because then, then nobody would be after you. Right, so so I don't want anybody to notice that I'm stealing. Food. Cool. So you're like the food ninja. Yes, exactly. Perfect. Yes, that's what I want. And wait, where where are you? Are you these guys down here? Or no, I'm you're the you're the person eating the noodles out of the bowl. <laughs> that's amazing. I love it. I'm just laying there <laughs> eating the food. But this is not an accurate depiction of my superpower because this looks like I'm just eating off of whatever people are dropping. <laughs> 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 I don't want that. I want to be able to to steal people. Well, that wasn't the read for me. It doesn't look like it's dropping out of her bowl. It looks like you're like using the force to take it from her oh, bowl, yeah. but from the opposite side. So she has no idea it's happening. And she's just like, wow, I'm eating really fast. Okay. I like that. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to go with that. that, that <laughs> I will just say that that was your pitch. That is my pitch. Cool. <laughs> All right. And I'm going to go down to Alex here. He it looks like you have, you're, you're drawing the, the horde. It's so many of these guys down here. My, my original superpower was cheating death. So there was this guy hiding in a bush behind the Grim Reaper while his, his decoy ate a bucket of nails. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just turned into a bunch of people. Just I love it. <laughs> They're like, we want to cheat death too. This is the kind of shit I draw my sketchbook all the time. Love it. All right. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over to, let's see. Kathleen, is that you? 
That's me. My superpower is I wish that when I got catcalled or hit on unwanted, I could turn into this. And then Ooh. nobody would talk to me. I love it. <laughs> so good. Oh, <Well>, yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> um, and then I drew um, the son. His superpower is photosynthesis. So he's giving some of that to the plant. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Love it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. All right, let's see, where should I go next? I'm gonna go up towards, see, I, I did this the last time. I needed to start following the cursors and not the art because sometimes I find art and there's no cursor there. All right, let's see, Elaine, let's go to you now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, there are days uh, I just have like a huge art block and they're like, and I just wish I could just transfer um, like what I plan into, into the canvas. Like I don't need to draw. I just simply transfer the image <laughs> to my tablet or computer. That's what's coming out after Fresco, so that's going to be. <laughs> yeah, be we got people working 0. on that. Yeah, they're they're in the basement with brushes right now. <laughs> that's cool. I like that power a lot, and it it's perfect for like oh the deadline's tomorrow, no problem. Yeah, it's definitely. Yeah, can I get that power for Monday? <laughs> All right, let's see. Sophie, how's it going over here? It, did your cursor just run away? Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm like switching back and forth between windows. Oh, my, no I thought my... that when I called you out, you like disappeared. You're like, I don't want to talk <laughs> Oh, about. yeah. Yeah, my superpower is I don't get anyone to look at my art. But um, <laughs> <laughs> my, my superpower, I've been thinking about this recently, is like, knowing exactly what my plants need at all times instead of having to guess what might be wrong with them. So if they could just tell me like I need sun and I need water tomorrow or like I don't need water right now, please. That would be really great. <laughs> could you hear them talking to you or would you just know? I think if they could talk to me, that would be ideal. That'd be Although, amazing. Yeah. You can become like the say. advocate of all plant life on the planet. Yeah, I'd be like running up to people like, stop watering your plants. <laughs> plant defender. I love it. Exactly. All right, let's see. Let's see, Sun Men, where, where are you? Where are you going? I'm trying to follow your cursor. He was the legal thief. Oh, there here you are. Oh no, we did we already we already looked at yours, right, Simon? Simon or Yeah, so that's, I don't know what she's Okay. I'm moving his left the chat. All right, let's see here. I'm getting really scatterbrained now. It's that trying to do right and left brain at the same time. Let's see, we talked to Sophie. Uh Victoria. I really like mm -hmm. the way your characters turned out. This is cool. Looks like I see a little bit of water bending. Is that is that right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's pretty much it. It's just a uh, water. She's she's like a sorcerer and she's doing a water spell of some kind. I don't know. I just wanted to kind of do some fun patterns and show a cool character doing a cool thing. Yeah, it's super cool. I just had that discussion with my kids the other day. Like, if you could only pick one, uh, like you know, avatar ability, which one would be the ultimate? <laughs> and we had varying opinions. I mean, it really depends because I think the science of avatar isn't fully explained. <laughs> like if you can control earth, does that mean you can control all minerals mm -hmm. or just the ones in the earth? Because then theoretically you could kill people by just sucking out all the iron in their body. Yeah. <laughs> You, like, you really need to talk. You need to talk to my kids because they are like ultra nerdy about this discussion. Um, <laughs> and they got these people they follow on YouTube who've like literally broken down the science and talked oh about just that. Oh, yeah. No, they're like, well, that that you could do that if you were like a super, super advanced earth earthbender. Like those are like yeah. for the, the high, high, super high masters. And it, it's like, oh, OK, yeah, you've figured it all out, haven't you? 
I mean, I actually wasn't like a like an Avatar person. It came a little too late for me. So, um, you know, most of my elemental magic stuff comes from like Full Metal Alchemist. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, anime is much more my jam. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, let's see here. And who's the who's who's done the? Uh, the it looks like the little girl up here in the upper right hand corner. Oh, oh it's me. Yeah. <laughs> she has like camera aperture eyes. Because... Oh rad. Yeah, I want photographic memory. Or just better memory, like, overall. <laughs> I love it. Such a good superpower. So, but, but no, a little like... girl in Akira. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, which one? Uh, the, the little girl in the hospital in Akira. The old face. Oh, I, I, I need to watch that. I'm not sure. <laughs> I need to look into that. <laughs> Very blue children. Mm. Now, is yeah. this a totally biological thing, or are these like implants? Hmm. Preferably something that I'm born with. Born with. <laughs> mm -hmm. Doesn't have to be an implant. Yeah. This is just a like a concept. <laughs> I love it though. I love I love the lighting the lighting angle too. It's like totally. It, she just looks super powerful to me. Like I'm not gonna mess with that little girl. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. All right, and then the the mind reading, yes, the mind reading. Yes, dog. the mind reading dog. Absolutely. Um, so I just got really excited by all the cute stuff that people were drawing on the other canvas, and I was mm -hmm. like, I want to draw something cute. So yeah, I don't know, superpower. He can read your mind. He knows your thoughts. How does that make you feel if your dog knew your thoughts? Good. Yeah. You know how much I love him. Yeah, I think it'd be a good thing. I think that's one of the things that's so cool about dogs. A lot of them are so empathetic. It's almost like they can. Yeah. You know, true. they know when they know when you need comforting and they know when you need someone to steal your food. <laughs> and... All right. Let's see. It's come over here to Jared. Jared's doing something really cute, really chibi. <laughs> right now. Kawaii. No, this is super cool. I want to be able to turn into a monster. Yeah. Uh, a scary, messed up, nightmarish thing, which um, it's funny. I used to do this when I was a kid uh, in school. I used to fantasize about like hulking out and turning into a creature. And so I would draw monsters all day. I'm just, um, it's interesting trying to do something in, uh, in grayscale. Uh, it's very challenging because the the, um, the resolution is a little limited but it's yeah it's nice it's uh, it kind of frees you up it's like oh i don't get to noodle that face <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but it, it is it is cool so just like playing around with kind of like the the forearm theme the x and kind of like repeating it in like a horn pattern over here and just you know messing around i kind of got a late start um but now that i figured out how this works um it's fun it's fun and and the glitch totally me I, I i realized i was painting or trying to paint on uh uh hidden layers or um layers that weren't didn't have the icon the eyeball oh, on oh no totally my bad could not figure that out for the longest time well i'm glad you were able to to break through and get get uh get painting this is super cool doing something yeah i i have to admit i'm nerding out a little bit because i'm getting to watch you work on a creature and i'm not watching a pre-recorded video <laughs> <laughs> it's a little slower i speed up the pre-recorded. oh yeah but that's yeah. that's where the, where the juicy stuff happens right you get to see all the decisions and, and that kind of stuff i could do that for hours yeah no it's but you know it, it is similar to that that uh that process I'm, I'm trying to be very honest um in the in the stuff i put out there because i feel like there's so much um, misinformation, not necessarily intentional when it comes to education, but if you look at some of your favorite artists work, all you see are just these incredible finishes. And yeah. you know, how, how do you piece together process from that? And it, it all stemmed from one of the first books I ever got that, that had a huge influence on me, which was uh, one of Brahms books. It was available everywhere at like Barnes and Noble when I was a kid in the nineties. And you, you'd go from like painting to sketch. And that, that made me just fall in love with, with process more so than the, the 
the final product. So breaking down uh, how you're able to work in a, in a very consistent way um, really helps with in regards to teaching and even in your own process. I'm always trying to figure that out. Yeah, we were just talking about that in one of the other streams is that one of the really cool things about this day and age is you can go on YouTube and see a million different artist processes, right? And just watch them paint and do stuff. But the challenge with that, I think from a, from a learning standpoint, sometimes can be that a lot of times what you're seeing, if they're not teaching, if they're not yeah. explaining what they're doing, you're seeing their shorthand and yeah. you're not seeing all the decisions they're making. So, you know, um, for a beginner artist, where you need to really think about shape and form and composition, uh, really experienced artists, you might be walk, watching them and they're doing that kind of in their head as they go. Um, yeah. So you're seeing that shorthand. And um, I know that like when I was starting out, I definitely fell into this thing of like feeling like I had to make that leap without learning the basics because I didn't mm -hmm. know. Um, so yeah, that's where I, I just, I think the, and then the flip side too is like people are able to get tutorials out there um, that much more easily. Um, yep. And as soon as you can get your hands on some great learning resources, it's just there for the taking. Um, and it's incredible. Yeah. If, I mean, you could just get an education through YouTube, but you would have to be uh, incredibly disciplined and That's right. um, just kind of do I, your- I think it's doable through. these days though, yep. for sure, to just do like some private education or like take a la carte classes online. You go through the entire Nomen library if you, if you wanted to. And uh, that'd be an incredible foundation on top of drawing every single day. And yeah, I guess I mostly challenging yourself. Is dev, so I probably is uh, is Nomen mostly three D. Uh, it is. It, it's it, well, when I was teaching there, it was mainly uh, a visual effects based school. But when I was um, teaching, I was teaching one of the more traditional classes on uh, character and creature design. For a bit and uh, kind of refused to do it in 3D, knowing that they would, they would um, definitely the students would have enough of those classes as is. Um, but yeah, when it comes to techniques utilized today in in visual effects, I, I think Nomen's pretty unbeatable. Um, well, and they there. have, um, you know, along the same lines of the class that you taught they have folded in a ton of traditional uh, training. Um, and, and a big part of that is, yeah. And, and a big part of that is like the values of the school and, and very much uh, for, for Alex who founded it. It's like, if you're not just drawing every day, if you're not learning how to do figure drawing and studying anatomy and perspective and values, if, if you're not learning how to do it traditionally, you'll only be able to take your digital tools so far. Um, and, and you'll feel limited by them when you shouldn't feel limited by them. Um, yeah, most of the portfolios that I saw, you know, back in the day, even un unrelated to Nomen, um, one of the most consistent things I would tell students is to just uh, stop using the computer for a little bit and, um, you know, just sketch pads, observational drawing, tons of observational drawing. If they were into, into creature design, then they should just be using a sketchbook and going to the zoo. Nowadays, you could definitely get away with doing that on your iPad. You know, it, it's yeah. not necessary to be completely traditional, even though I, I fought that for a while um, because I have a traditional sculpting background. And so it actually took me a while to come around with, um, with ZBrush because I would tell students that they have to uh, work in clay in order to understand sculpture. And then ZBrush kept updating and it got more and more intuitive and amazing and eventually became clay. And, you know, I got to a point where I was like, ah, you could probably, you could probably get everything you need in terms of sculpture uh, out of ZBrush. It's, but it's possible. Yeah. If you want to take a an actual real clay uh, creature and character sculpting course, you can do that at Nomen too, though. Yeah. Um, we've got a great instructor there by the name of John Brown. So, yeah, while the aim of the school is primarily like the full-time programs are going to teach you the digital production pipeline. So you're going to start out with the foundational skill sets. You're going to sculpt in some real clay and do all of the, the traditional foundational things to lay that down as the first layer. And then you're going to build digital production on it. But the graduates from our full-time programs are definitely launching into digital production careers, which is going to be a lot more 3D. Um, but we have a lot of artists that will come through 
and sometimes take individual classes to pick up some of the more traditional stuff we're teaching or to get into some character and creature design. Um, we've got students that will take our foundation uh, course, which is a lot of traditional stuff, um, intending to go to a different school than Noman. They'll just use that as a preparatory to build their portfolio. So you can definitely get both. But if you go through the full-time program at Noman, uh, what you will come away with is ultimately you'll be a 3D generalist with very solid art uh, foundational skills. Oh, but there, is there anything specifically for animation, like for VizDev, Visual Development? Um, there's going to be, you're going to get some of that in kind of the conglomeration of the design classes, you know, ranging from character, creature, environment, props, that kind of stuff. But when you get into the animation side, you're going to learn 2D animation principles. You'll spend some time there to get your foundation, but then you'll oh, be but going... not like designing for animation, um, like in, the in... specific concept art for animation. I know that we have, um, and that this might just be outside of my purview of experience because I'm a little bit more of a, of a realism guy, but um, I know that we have um, options for people to go more in the stylized direction. Um, and when they are learning um, conceptual ideas, I know that probably the coursework is going to have you, for example, if you want to do something more stylized from a viz dev standpoint, they mm -hmm. will still have you learn like traditional anatomy and then learn how to push it, push, you know, traditional human anatomy in, in the character design classes. Mm -hmm. um, but if you go, go just look at some of the student work on the website, um, we do have some really amazing like uh, stylized uh characters coming up and then being handed off to animators. Um, I know that it's not the same as VizDev, but also uh, LookDev is a really big part of, of oh, the gotcha. pipeline. Oh, so gotcha. But you do do some of the 3D pipeline and animation? Oh, that's that would be our primary with regards to animation. Yeah. We'll, we'll gotcha. do the 3D pipeline. Sense. Yeah, for sure. Kathleen, you, were you on school when Jackie was on school? Uh, du Jackie De DeRuco, I think. Uh, I yeah. I can't remember her last name. She, no, she I don't think I was. Or Vizdev looked at. Oh, that's so cool. Thanks. She's at Lightstar now. <laughs> oh, and the other thing I should mention um, is uh, we no one works with the like the California ETP program. Um, if you haven't heard of that, essentially, Noman works with studios so that their employer employees can come and take individual classes and have those classes paid for by the state of California. Oh, nice. um, as part of professional development. So, I mean, if any of you guys or anybody else, you know, is looking to either get into uh, the digital production pipeline in 3D or even just wants to come in for a figure drawing class, um, you know, the whole gamut, uh, I can definitely, you guys all have my email address. I can definitely put you in touch with, with the person that works on that with the studios um, because we've got a bunch of uh, industry artists taking individual classes right now at Noman because of that. Um, and anybody that's is in the chat that heard me say that too, um, I'll, I'll drop a little contact thing in the chat in case you guys want to reach out with regards to that. I don't know if somebody already asked this already, but do you guys have any VR related classes or anything? We do use, um, so like our education lead for games, for the games pipeline, um, wow. he's working with VR very extensively. Cool. Um, we, he, so he's. How should I say it? And I just did a stream with him recently. Uh, you can find it on our YouTube library. Uh, mm -hmm. His name is uh, is um, Anton. I know that he's working with the students. We have a VR lab at the school, and he's working with them to bring VR into their pipeline to utilize it as a tool, um, especially when they're starting to get into like real time environment art and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that we necessarily. Because the entire curriculum at Noman, it's basically one major, and that's digital production. So you'll learn every aspect of the digital production pipeline. So when if you choose specifically games and working within game engines, uh, you'll have access to that lab. You'll have access to all the stuff that he's uh, researching and you know making available as a part of that pipeline. I know that you know a more robust curriculum, you know potentially specifically with, with regards to VR, um, could be in development as a future thing, but I think we're basically following it very closely. We're utilizing it. And as we see where it's going, that'll definitely have an influence on our curriculum. I see. Yeah. Okay. I would love to learn some VR stuff. Have you guys messed around like in uh, gravity sketch or medium? 
I have messed around in Medium because since Adobe bought it, I'm mm -hmm. like low key trying to like figure it out. I, Cause I went to school for animation, right? So um, I loved modeling and modeling was one of my favorite parts, uh, but of course the perfect world got in the way. So, but I just got an Oculus, I've been playing around. It's fun, but I have to admit, I'm so used to edge loop modeling that it makes me super anxious to just lay <laughs> down stuff. Like I'm like, ah, the topology. Ah. That's funny. <laughs> right. So like, actually, if either of you have any tips on somebody who basically put down Maya 10 years ago, and now I'm back trying to mm. model, how do I like deal with have my you existential out, crisis? <laughs> have you checked out Gravity Sketch? No, I haven't. So Gravity Sketch is um, kind of VR's answer to that. Um, it still is a little bit more on the intuitive side. So what you can do in gravity sketch is you can basically do your initial design sketch in 3d space. Right. So what a lot of people do is they'll sketch the silhouette of a car and then they'll divide that and mirror it, like stretch it out. And right. then you can start drawing in your topology and they do okay. dynamic subdivision. They, oh. So it, it works more on a traditional, like kind of hard surface modeling workflow. Um, right. but it's a little bit more simplified still. Um, but the, the guys on that team are constantly rolling out new features that are starting to make it more and more, uh, capable towards what you'd be doing in more traditional hard surface. I'll check it out. Yeah. It's, it's super fun. I've, I've barely scratched the surface, but, um, I love the way like Finian McManus has been using medium, um, yeah. in his concept workflow. And then I'm, I'm looking at, because I'm not, I'm not, I have not learned Maya extensively. I've done, mm. I've done a lot lately in ZBrush, but um, for me, something like Gravity Sketch gives me access to more of that precise type modeling um, right. and to begin to understand how that works. That and Z Modeler and ZBrush is pretty cool too. Yeah, that is solid. Has anyone tried Blender? I've been using that one for like blocking in my Vista work and I, I really like Blender. it. Yeah. Blender's awesome. It's nice that it's free because, you know, for what I do and the extent that I need to go with 3D, it's it gets you there. And there's like a built in lighting system that's really nice. It's a dynamic sky. Just been telling yeah. everyone about it, especially if they're a student and they don't want to pay for Maya. It's it's <laughs> like a really nice alternative. And I spent like a hundred bucks on like a handful of add ons like box cutter. Um, there was that. Like, Hard ops. There's one that makes like ropes in Blender, and the fact that you can just like buy all these extra little plugins for a little bit of money on your program is insane. It was a Yama Yurubev just developed something? He just dropped it like either earlier this yeah, month or last month. You can like put photos straight into like a plane and model there's, from yeah. the photo, and there's, it like extrapolates the information and the like, z depth. There's that, and then also he just came up with something called Quick Shape, which is like a really simple super intuitive almost like box cutter it works really well with box cutter but you can basically just draw shapes and determine how that shape will materialize in 3d space you can like quickly iterate like if you turn on a mirror plane you can start iterating like limbs of a robot or a mech or whatever and, and just do it as a as more of like a person drawing it out kind of like how jared you were doing your armature like they'll just do that in quick shape and then adjust it from there in, but, um, in, in blender yeah I keep, I, I, I'm meant to pick up Blender. I, I tend to uh, work on, on, you know, multiple projects at once. And so I'm kind of at the mercy of my old tricks all the time. Um, so I haven't, I haven't been able to go beyond ZBrush. And then every time I try to go beyond ZBrush, they keep coming out with new versions. And, <laughs> and now there's, now I don't have to learn a new program because the, you know, the hard surface stuff is better. Mm -hmm. Um, but Blender, a lot of people have been picking up uh, Blender. When I, my last stint at Marvel, everybody's making the uh, the donut, doing the donut uh, <laughs> yeah, tutorial. The, the Blender and, Guru donut. Yeah, and it, it was driving me crazy because obviously these people are more talented than me if they have the time to make their deadlines and learn, you know, a new program. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm I'm dying to try it, but between. ZBrush and Keyshot, I mean, especially for like a character creature guy, uh, you're, you're kind of covered. Uh, when it comes to more complicated scenes, oh yeah, Blender. I would, I would, definitely, uh, I would, I would definitely try that. Well, and they just, 
I, I didn't know this anyway until recently, but they just released a version of Octane Render specifically for Blender that's free. Wow. Oh, wow. So and you can plug that into Blender now for free. And that's that's exactly what I'm using Blender for, Jared, is I'll, you know, if I want to do like a quick, just specifically proper character render, I'll take it into something like a key shot or Marmoset. Wow. But um, one, once I've baked my topology and stuff, I can bring it into Blender and I can set up an entire world and do like a keyframe image. Um, See, awesome. and it's, it's actually surprisingly quick to learn. And that's coming from a guy that's totally 2d. That's just barely started getting into 3d this last year. Really? Yeah. Oh, but yeah. I'll, uh, there's some, there's a really good line of tutorials on YouTube, uh, done by a guy named Grant Abbott. He's very mm -hmm. direct and to the point. I um, mean, he's not, he doesn't talk around what he's doing a lot. I'll send you an email with links to that. If you're interested. Yeah. I'm gonna and also love to plug a guy named von ling oh he i haven't worked with his heavy stuff poly. yet yeah oh heavy poly yeah yeah and he i have never really used 3d i just started using blender in like january and i feel super confident with 3d he's a great teacher too the heavy poly um the whole heavy oh, yeah. poly tutorial pack is like really easy to follow um, and the hotkeys pop up for you, which is like really nice. It's like a whole little list of them. So if you forget, it's like really intuitive. Um, but it does change your hotkeys, so just be aware. Um, I just watched uh, from Blender Guru. Um, he interviewed the guy who created Blender um, oh, for, cool. for an hour or something. And I'm like, man, this is the guy. And he talks about how why he made it for free. And the Blender Guru guy's like, why don't you like make it why didn't you get money for it? And he's just like, I don't, money doesn't interest me. It's not, <clears throat> and I'm like, down. Oh, yeah, okay. Zero. Yeah. Is amazing. Amazing. Uh, guys, I want to be respective to everybody's time. Um, we are just slightly over the six o'clock mark. And I don't know if any of you guys have another place to be. I am like totally down to hang longer. Uh, but um, I wanted to make sure that I had a chance to get to everybody's superpower here. Um, and I am now cannot remember <laughs> who, I, who I've not gotten to. Can you guys help me out there? I haven't done anything. Where are you at? Uh, Melanie or? Yeah. Yeah. Where are you? Um, the crazy cat lady in the top <laughs> Oh yeah. Cool. Right next to Jared, right? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, thanks to you. Thanks to thanks to the person that actually completed the other cat because yeah, there's yeah, a layer on top and I couldn't draw anything. <laughs> I'm here for support. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so my first superpower uh, I would love to have, um, it's like actually the ability to like uh, bring color back to corals because coral reefs are, cor coral reefs are dying and they're just bleaching and turning white. But I didn't want to draw that because I actually did that a couple of months ago. But uh, since quarantine started, I've been trying to remain like zen as much as possible. So I want the superpower to just control like my anxiety. <laughs> and also I want to uh, be able to multiply my cat whenever I'm anxious. Cause like <laughs> he's purring is the only thing that really calms me down. <laughs> so I can always, I always imagine multiplying him into like a hundred cats in my apartment just purring next to me. And that feeling just warns me. <laughs> just That's super me. cool. And in a different ASMR. context, like that could also be super intimidating, right? Like if, if you were like <laughs> standing there and, and somebody was confronting you and suddenly you could summon all these cats. <laughs> oh, I would, I would, I would love that. I don't, That's super cool. I don't care what everybody else thinks. <laughs> I'll be like, look, this is my super bar. And it's like 300 cats up here in the room. <laughs> so apparently you do not have a cat allergy. No. Yeah. Well, I kind of do, but it kind of went away when I just started putting my nose in my cat every day. <laughs> <laughs> like you're not the first person that i've heard say that how can you not put your face in your cat it's the best <laughs> especially that soft belly <laughs> yes exactly it's just super soft and if your cat is cool with it i'm gonna best. actually um i'm gonna sign off but uh it was really fun it was great to see you thank thanks thank you everyone who came um i, I just gotta sign off but uh for sure yeah i'll yeah. see you <laughs> bye Hi, Victoria. Yeah, thank you so much bye, Victoria. Bye. Yeah, actually, I got to bounce too. But yeah, I want to save this real quick, though. Take this care, everyone. Have fun.
Yeah, thanks everybody. Um, just while we're all here, thank you so much for being here and for taking the time. Um, this is this has been super super fun. I've had a great time just hearing from all you guys. Thanks for having us. Yeah, this has been thanks amazing. Thank you. Yeah, I gotta head out myself too. Yeah, no worries at all. Um, yeah, we're actually over the six o'clock mark. So I'll just say to everybody in the chat. Thank you so much for tuning in. This was uh, the last of the four all-star artist jams that uh, Nomen uh, is hosting for Lightbox. And then we're kind of wrapping up Lightbox today anyway. So this has been an amazing weekend. Um, I've had such a good time with all these artists. Uh, definitely want to give another plug. There's still more content to catch for Lightbox. So if you're tuning in here and you don't know what Lightbox is, get over to lightboxexpo.com. Um, and, uh, you can, I think it literally only costs a dollar to get in to see the rest of the program. So even just a buck for the rest of the day is nothing. Um, but Lightbox is an amazing, um, artist convention that was debuted in Pasadena, California, uh, just last year. And this year they have taken the entire thing online and been doing some really innovative stuff like providing Magma studio for artists to connect and draw. So check it out. Um, our sponsor for this stream and the channel that we're on is Nomen School. Uh, we're a 3D art school in Hollywood that specializes in training artists for careers in uh, visual effects, animation, and games. And um, uh, if you're interested in taking even an indiv individual class at Nomen, um, or if you want to get a degree at Nomen, or take one of our full-time programs, you can do that as well. But for anybody inter interested in an individual class, we're also offering a special light box uh, discount of 20% on our individual courses. And I will paste into the, the uh, stream chat here um, how you can go about doing that and get in touch with us at Nomen. But with that, guys, uh, thanks to everybody who's been here. This has been a real treat. And, um, you know, do, uh, this, this link will stay up uh, for all the artists if you want to, like, uh, you can go up to file and save a PNG to your desktop or something like that of what we did together. And, uh, yeah, hope to bump into you guys again in the future. This has been an awesome time. Thank you so much for doing this. Uh, thank, you thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Have a great rest of your Sunday, everybody.